Nottingham Forest have beaten Liverpool at Anfield for the first time since 1969 and in this video we're going to be diving into how Nuno Espirito Santo set up his side defensively to stop Liverpool and the tactical adaptation he made to get his side the win. When trying to come up with a way to stop Liverpool, Nuno Espirito Santo's job was to pose something that no other team had done yet. And when you think about the way that Liverpool have gotten a lot of their goals, more importantly, the way that they have gotten their opening goals in nearly every single fixture that they've played, it requires space. Space is the combining feature, the feature that runs throughout. When you think about the Ipswich goal, they beat an offside line and it allowed them to get in behind. When you think about the Brentford goal that Liverpool scored, it was a counter-attack from Brentford's own corner. And then when you think about the Manchester United first goal, it's about Casemiro giving the ball away high up the pitch for Liverpool, low up the pitch in terms of Manchester United, and then Liverpool were able to take that space that was afforded to them by Manchester United and then convert that chance. So the idea that Nuno needed to go with was something different. So what are you going to do if you sit in a low block and that is where we're going to begin because Nuno Espirito Santo had his side set up very much in a 4-4-2. Anderson and Dominguez are two players that I really want to look at to begin with because they worked really hard not only in dropping back and doubling up with their fullbacks but also staying quite narrow and in staying narrow and making sure the distance between the back four and essentially the middle four, it, you're condensing the space, you're making it difficult for Liverpool to play through. And this is what I'm talking about when I'm mentioning defensive shape. So you've got Morgan Gibbs-White that's come across to try and contest Ryan Gravenberch and here I want you guys to take a look at this. Look at Robertson's positioning right here. He's made that run from the left back role to a really attacking position. I mean, look at that. And it's all to try and move these Nottingham Forest players around. You can see Ryan Yates here has been able to double up on that, and then that's why you've got Morgan Gibbs White moving across. Defensively, Nottingham Forest were fantastic, but it's this movement from Robertson that I found really, really interesting. Now, if we move on a touch just a second, we can see that the runs were just always being followed. This ball gets played down here. Ryan Yates follows it. Of course, it ends up ending in a shot for Luis Diaz, but the idea is there. And look at the congestion. The space in between the midfield four and the back four is really tight. Nottingham Forest decided to engage at a certain point. They dropped back a little bit, but it was all about contesting the space in between the lines for where Liverpool wanted to be and it meant that Soboslai didn't really have any option, it meant that Jota didn't really have any option and that's why you've got those runs from Robertson to try and move and create those spaces. Mo Salah was left isolated on occasion and Luis Diaz, while I thought he was Liverpool's best creator, didn't really have too much to offer either. It was just a brilliant defensive display from Forrest. So the second half rolls around and on a slot and Liverpool need to do something different. Something isn't working and Nottingham Forest are looking quite comfortable from a defensive point of view. When the second half rolls around, a couple of things happen. First of all, Andy Robertson still makes that run from left back forwards. Again, to try and upset the rhythm and the tempo that Nottingham Forest have and to try and make sure that they can drag some players away. This gives Luis Diaz extra time and space, or you would believe it would, and it would help Liverpool in creating attacks. The second thing is Trent Alexander-Arnold moved in field. Rather than staying out in that right-back role, he then became essentially a full-on central midfielder for that second half. Moving in field does a couple of things. Number one, it allows him to get on the ball a little bit more and you're expecting that he's going to be able to play those passes through the lines. However, because of the deepness of Nottingham Forest, those passes were not on. And because of the extra movement of Andy Robertson, what you're then doing, like I mentioned earlier on, is opening up the channels for Nottingham Forest. And here, is where the game changes because I believe Nuno Espirito Santo sees Trent Alexander-Arnold's new position and I think he believes he can now isolate. 
And this is exactly what I'm talking about. So we've got Connor Bradley here coming in in that right back role. This allows Trent to then come into midfield and partner with Ryan Gravenberch once Alexis McAllister comes off. But notice this here, the empty space. And that's because Andy Robertson has made yet another run from left back to a more forward position. And all of this combines to one thing. Liverpool here are extremely narrow. Look how in field Conor Bradley is. Look at the space on the left-hand side of Virgil van Dijk. And this is what Nuno Espirito Santo saw. He saw that there was an opportunity to be able to capitalise on the narrowness of Liverpool's defensive and midfield play. In doing this, they were able to then isolate Jules on the wings through Callum Hudson-Odoi and Anthony Elanga. And in this, in this particular scenario, we see... The ball get played through into Callum Hudson-Odoi and then it's a case of can you win your 1v1? And yes, he can. He beats Conor Bradley in this 1v1 duel and he's away. And look at this. This is terrifying if you're a Liverpool fan. You've got one, you've got two acres and acres of space. You've essentially got a 3v2 here because no one's catching Anthony Alanga. You're not really catching Callum Hudson-Odoi and you're relying so much on Canate and Van Dijk to cover so much space. Now this is huge. These are big red flags for me and I'm not trying to dig at Liverpool at all. I think they were just trying to win a game but these are the things that you need to look at and need to understand as to why the game broke down and the game changed and flipped on its head because of the way that Liverpool tried to change the game and because of the way that Nottingham Forest and Nido Espirito Santo who needs to be given credit adapted. And they adapted brilliantly. Drive, play, just fantastic. It was brilliant. The problem that Liverpool had is still with being as gung-ho as they were, the passes were being intercepted, the passes were being blocked, and you still got that counter-attacking opportunity with Alanga now on the pitch and with Hudson-Odoi, you've got danger throughout the side. And Liverpool just failed to be able to deal with or recognise any of these attempts. And it meant that while Nottingham Forest were very good at defensive play and defending their lines, they also had great, great counter-attacking opportunities. And it's from these counter-attacking opportunities that they managed to get their goal. And then, of course, you've got the goal. What I mentioned before as well, you've got Anthony Alanga going down this right-hand side, but look on the bottom of your screen. You've got Callum Hudson-Odoi as well on this left-hand side, occupying those channels, taking those spaces, and look at how narrow this Liverpool back three are. Now, this is fine because you can come and contest out on the wings. It's better to be narrow than to be very wide and spread out. However, it's down to this that Nottingham Forest were able to get some joy and where they were able to get some attacking opportunities and if we follow this on we can see it's a great pass from Anthony Alanga down to Callum Hudson-Odoi but Liverpool are all over the place they're not set and then it's a case of can Callum Hudson-Odoi once again win a duel something that the Liverpool wingers were not necessarily able to do on a continuous basis against the Nottingham Forest fullbacks it's all about whether you can win it and he can and he drives forwards into this area now you could argue be confronted by Canate a bit quicker you could argue that Liverpool should converge a little bit more but it's just really good wide play brilliantly executed and he whips it towards the bottom right hand corner fantastic set shot fantastic from Nottingham Forest Callum Hudson-Odoi and Nudo Espirito Santo who needs to be given a great deal of credit but of course, guys, let me know what you think in the comment section below. Are you a Liverpool fan? Tell me how you're feeling and what you think Arnashot could do for his next game. And Nottingham Forest fans, let me know how you're feeling. It's a fantastic result for you. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you ever so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something new. And I hope to see you in the next one. But until then, my friends, take care.